And welcome back to Jalen Says. And today we are with Mr. Karan. So how's your day going today? Man, it's going really good, Jalen. Um, just been busy on calls, yeah. making it happen, yeah. building, dreaming, putting it all together. How was your day? Oh, my day's going really good. Good. Yeah. good. Good. Yeah, you stay busy. You do a lot of stuff. You, you're an author, you're an actor, you're a producer, director. You do it all, man. Yeah, work. You know, in this game, you can't be... Um, a master of anything really at the end of the day you have to be a jack of all trades and i know early in life i know people told me don't be a jack of all trades be a master or something but i think you got to find a few things to master and then after that you have to be able to pivot off of those things and make the things that you mastered work for you right so for me acting is my main my main energy my main focus but I also produce I also write I also direct I also uh, I'm still working on my book coming out. It's, just, it's, just, it's a constant work of just being a creative yes. and just doing different things to just feed my creative spirit, right? So um, we're both kind of creatives. And, well, we're both creative. We right. both do a lot of stuff. We share some similar things, too. And we met, actually, doing a project together. A movie. Yes, where I played your son. And right. He looks, look, 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 he looks like he could be my son. Look at that. There you go. Cheekbones, nose, the whole, the whole nine. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes, and that was really cool. But thank you for letting me interview you. Absolutely, bro. Like, I'm all about just helping each other out and, and serving each other. I think we are here to serve each other. So, you know, you ask me, you know, say, it's like, yeah, let's do it, man. You, I, I love seeing um, our young, our young people have a vision and going after it and doing exactly what you see in your vision and you know shout out to your mom cat she's a great mom she brings you to set she takes she brought you out here all the way from making drive you up here that's just you got to remember man to never forget her and always take care of when you blow up and become this big time superstar actor interviewer podcaster everything that you're going to become yes thank you thank you yeah. well i also will thank you mom. yeah you yeah. better not forget her yes i won't i won't yeah, she ain't gonna let you exactly. Yeah. yeah, so you say we all have to like work for and with each other, right? So, what gave you that concept in your mind? What started you on this path? I don't know. I, I, I would have to say, maybe my mother, man. My mother set me in the path of just really understanding my own self worth and understanding that um, I'm special in my own right. And I think as I've grown as a man, as, as a person, I've started understanding that being that being able to control that specialness and that and that, and that energy that I, that God gave me is the way I should go. Not necessarily going to work for somebody else for my whole life. It's to build my own legacy for my family, for my kids. And I think um, as I've grown, I've grown into an entrepreneur spirit and learning how to do for self and, and, and protecting my legacy by by protecting my image and protecting who I am by controlling that. So how did you build the image that you're projecting? Um, building the image that I'm, that I'm projecting is more of a, not really a building, it's more of a just being, like being consistent. Like I always say the, the formula for success is consistency over time equals success, right? So you, you, have a, you have a vision of a goal and you have to continually every day get up and move towards that goal. And one day success, happens and it happens success doesn't happen overnight but one one night success happens my pastor always says that yeah so what was your first success man i guess my first success would be uh i think success is different for everybody too so my first success i, I think was when i played in the first grade i was i played puss in boots in a play and uh that's what kind of put me on the path for being an actor at that moment i knew i wanted to be an actor so um, you know, I kind of set my destination there. Then, I, then, then athletics came and sports came. And as you know, you know, I played football, pro football for seven years. And, you know, I did different things in, in the athletic world. But my goal was always to get back to acting. So how long have you been playing football before that time? Uh, I mean, I started playing football maybe in Little League for a minute. Then I went to high school, played like two years in high school, then college, of course, four years, then seven years in the pro. So. So is your same football, well, your same favorite football team, the same one you have now? I don't have a favorite football team. I don't, mm -hmm. I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't even follow football anymore. Like once I, I, I did that, it's over. I don't even watch football anymore. Um, you got your fair share? 
yeah, I've done it. It's over. I got a t-shirt to show for it, really, at the end of the day. It's like, I, I, once I feel like I'm one of those people, once I've I mastered something or, or accomplished it, like, what, what are we still sitting here doing, right? It's, it's nothing else I can get out of it, unless I wanted to go into sports broadcasting and those type of things. And I actually, you know, tinkered in that a little bit, you know, while I was playing and um, kind of in the transition from acting, from football to acting, I, I tinkered in in sports talk and those type of things. But I already came down to it. I just wasn't interested in talking about somebody else's um, physical feats every day, every mm-hmm. night. I really talk about myself or, uh, or or a good movie or a good TV show or something like that in, in the arts. So after you left football, was your first idea to go into the arts or was it something else? No, it was definitely I mean, my original goal was to be an actor and then athletics came and I figured I'd play sports until I ran out and I would always be able to go back to acting. So as soon as I left football, it was, it was an easy choice. I, I knew what I wanted to do, so I went straight to working on acting. So what was the first thing or the thing that really pushed you into that zone? What was the thing, the uh, project, I mean, sorry. Uh, I don't know if it was a project more as just what, 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 my, what my dreams and my goals were. I think I, I, I went in, I guess my first gig, I think the thing I booked first was maybe it was a Tyler Perry gig, wow. uh, Meet the Browns, my first professional um, TV gig. And it was a funny story because I did that 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 gig or that, or that show for Tyler Perry with uh, my wife. Uh, she was a she was a series regular on the show, and she was a star, and she was killing it. I thought we saw her from somewhere. Yeah, absolutely, you've seen her in tons of places. You probably remember her from her first year because you were a little young. But um, yeah, so the funny story is, my first professional gig was in a scene with her being directed by Ken Fields. Wow! Uh, and on the show, produced and made by Tyler Perry. So I came in the game, you know, blazing in a way, in my opinion. And I was scared shitless. You know, I, I, I went in there and, and, and I had one, I think I had one line and uh, I tore it, I butchered it. But it was my first step. And I'm so thankful to Kim Fields for being the director at the time because I think she probably could have ended my career before it started, but she just would have been truthful and told me how terrible I really was. But she did. She was like, that was brilliant. And she built me up and she gave me encouragement. She gave me love and, and, that, and, that, and that kept me going. So I always tell people, if you got something bad to say, keep it to yourself. And if you got something good to say, shout it to the Raptors because you never know who you're fueling to keep pedaling, right? To keep moving, to keep moving forward. And that's like, you know, my motto is just keep pedaling. Never keep stop. Pedaling. Exactly. Keep pedaling. You see it, boom, 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 boom. We see it. Bam. Yes. So what made you come up with that? Well, I'm a cyclist. I'm, I'm an avid cyclist. I, I ride, you know, 100 plus miles a week. Um, I'm actually working on a book now called "The Things I've Learned from a Bike About Life." Wow. The title is a kind of working title, but um, I cycle, and you know, you spend a lot of time on the bike. You're out there doing, you know, 30, 40 miles, 20 miles. That's an hour, two hours, three hours. And you, you, you by yourself, you're in nature most of the time, and and I get to think a lot, you know, and um, I remember one trip I was coming from Alabama. I go to Alabama every year for my birthday. Uh, and it's kind of like a culminating thing for me. It's like 100 miles one way. I stay in the hotel and come back the next day, whatever. But the second day is really hard to come back. And usually I find a lot of spiritual gifts on that second day. And the second, the first time I rode the ride, I came back and I remember I was tired. I wasn't going to make it. And something just beamed into my spirit like, yo, just keep pedaling. And it was for everything in my life. It, it, it encompassed my, it encompassed that bike ride right there immediately. It encompassed my acting. It encompassed my producing. It encompassed my marriage, my my kids. It, it, it encompassed everything because as long as I'm in life, I can't I can't give up, right? I can't I can't stop. As long as you don't do those two things, everything is gonna work out. So I had that 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 moment of keep pedaling, and then I got the logo like. It, it just shot into my spirit. I came on, I wrote it down, and I started developing it. So how did that logo appear? Because I see like the Saturn. Yeah. Pedal. Yeah, so 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 it's simple. Like how the logo works is basically the two circles is the, the wheels. That's your future, your present. That's your future and your past moving at the same time simultaneously. And then the Saturn, you know, depicts well, actually it's Jupiter, it depicts hard work, faith, and all those type of things, and also spirit. Right, so it's, 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 it's that's the spiritual representation of Key Pella. and like I said, the two wheels is your past and your present, which means 
um, it, it happens simultaneously. Um, your present, your past, and your future is happen at the same time. You have to understand that the, the decisions you make today are going to affect your tomorrow, and the fact that tomorrow's coming means yesterday is gone. So it all constantly works, and your mother can attest to this, that she gets to see her past in you because y'all look so much alike, first and foremost. Mm -hmm. And, 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 and she's living in her present. And I don't know if her parents are alive or whatever, but she gets to see her future as well, seeing her parents, right? And as you grow older, you'll get kids one day and you'll see your present, your past, and in your future. So that's why I say it's all working simultaneously. Wow. Yeah, your mind's blown. I, get it. <laughs> I know. Wow. So, wow. Okay. Um, well, you are an author of the book so have you written any books before that or is it's, it's, I, mean, it's, I mean i'm not really a complete author yet because i haven't put it out and haven't finished it so the first book i i, I started writing i completed it well, i gotta go back and get it ready it's called man laws and that's just my my, my two cents to a young black male um, i see a lot of black men uh young young black men growing up and don't have a coach or a father or somebody that can Give them the guidance that they need to be a, a you know a complete man. So I wrote I wrote a book. I took you know wrote my man laws, the laws I kind of govern myself by. I said, look, I just give them to to whoever wants to read them, whoever wants to learn from them. And if it's for you, it's for you. If it's not, it's not. But I, again, I feel like if I have any answers to any of these questions of life, that is my responsibility to give those back. Wow. Because that because I don't own I don't own any of this information. It's, it's, it's accessible to all of us. And, and information can save a lot of people. Inf information to save tons of people has caused a lot of people's uh, demise. Information is the key. Understanding knowledge is the key. Self-knowledge is, is, is the number one. Yes, yes. And a lot of movies I saw information cuts. <laughs> yeah, I, absolutely. Yes. So speaking of movies, you appear to be in a lot of Christmas movies. Is that like your favorite thing or is it just that it just happened to be Christmas movies just coming your way. I think I think the Christmas movies just come my way. It's not absolutely not my favorite. I don't know. It could be my favorite thing. I just think I'm. A, I have a. I don't know. Maybe a Christmassy spirit. I don't know. But I figured when it started happening that way, I started having all those Christmas movies. I say, well, I'll let the Rock have the summers and the Black buses, and I'll take the holidays. Yeah, you know, simple as that. You seem like the person that like you could only see during the winter too, and just like. Yeah, and that's smiling. Good. Yeah, that's and, smiling. and that's the key. You know what I'm saying? When you Chris, you, you got the rock in the summer, and then you got Quran in the winter. Yeah. You know, that's the key. Yes, wow. So get your lane and stay in it. But I, I mean, like I said, I, I do all movies. I do everything. Like, but it just happens. So happens. I've done a ton of Christmas movies. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So like every time there's like Christmas, like what do you want to watch? Well, I mean, I have like thirty of my own that you could choose from. You that know? part, you got thirty of my own that could choose from the. Uh, Mary Leaf Christmas series was a really dope series for me. It helped build my career. I'm so thankful for that series. I got to learn from a lot of beautiful veteran actors in that series. Melinda Williams, Victoria Royale. Um, it was a, it's a ton. Carl Payne. I mean, I got, it, was a, it was an amazing experience for that whole series to do, to shoot that series. Um, so it was just, it was just really good, man. I'm, I'm thankful constantly for just everything that's happened in my career. Cause the one thing I always tell people like life isn't happening uh, to you, it's happening for you. You know, you, you pray, you, you wish, you hope, and people forget what they prayed and wished for when things are happening to them. And sometimes there's there's something bad that has to happen for something good to happen, right? So you have to take it all with the same kind of energy, the good and the bad. You can't get too up, you can't get too down. You got to stay even and stay aware that it's all happening for you, and and stay ready for the ready for the next thing. Yes, yes. So. Do you gain anything from like any mental notes from starring in Christmas movies from any of the characters that you play or anything? Well, in any movies that you've been in or shows or anything like that? Um, I don't know if I gain anything from everything I do. I think certain projects like when I played Muhammad Ali in, in, in a movie called The Last Punch, I think that really um, changed me a little bit as a man, as, as my spirit and how I think and how I see and uh but everything else is is, is usually par par parts of my personality that i'm pulling from to play them so it's not something that i have to learn more so than just remembering kind of go back into do you have a favorite character that you played or like the most fun 
Muhammad Ali was my favorite so far up until this point in my career. Uh, playing Muhammad Ali was was the cherry uh, cherry on top of my whole career. Like I, when I just, when I finished that movie, I could have pretty much retired at that point. But I have a lot more a lot more stories to tell, um, a lot more things to to show our culture and our community. So I just got to keep that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's the recurrent thing. Keep that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna probably like put up a video like a little counter on the side so on how many times you put up keep up oh well, you can even see it. it's gonna be a lot yeah yeah it's called yeah. branding yeah <laughs> yes 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 is that merch that you could buy it was i, I, I what i'll do with my merch is I'll, I'll release a certain amount and then i'm done releasing it then i come out with some new merch you know whenever i'm inspired to break it out because i don't want to lose the value of it so if you happen to buy the first round of hats and a couple other things you'll have it and as my career grows and continues to blow all the way up to the top that merch becomes even more valuable it is there, there's value in scarcity um it's still i think now we live in the world of social media and everybody wants to know everything and your content is constant it's always there but now i think more than ever being able to um continue to make scarcity is basic economics if you if you give the the, the, the consumer a product you flood the market which i'm in the flood the market process of my career I'm, I'm, just, I'm working on everything i can as an actor as a producer just to continue to flood the market and then once i get the market share i'll pull back my appearances i'll pull back my work and then i'll start making it more specific but you got to do the market flooding to get your value up and then once you get the value up basic economics create the create the demand and then pull the supply back. Mm. Pretty smart. Yeah, man. I learned that. In, I learned that in freshman year in college, in between falling asleep in economics class. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, with your first experience, well, with well, with your experience with Meet the Browns and your experience with uh, director, sorry, director, is that what made you want to lean into that sort of thing? Is that like the memory that captivates you to direct and produce? Well, I don't know if that's the memory that captivates me to direct. I think directing is just a natural um, growth for any artist in this field if you really are creative throughout. Like my wife, she's back, she's direct, she directs, she direct she directs a lot. And you know, her career started as an actor, basically. But I think as a creative and as as an artistic spirit, directing is a natural progression. It's like how much how many times can you do the same thing over and over again? And, that, and there's people who are able to just act their whole career. Maybe they just don't have the, you know, the capacity or the care to direct. Um, me personally, part of my history is I, I manage restaurants. I, I've owned restaurants. I ran them. So for me, producing and directing is very similar to being in the restaurant game, which I, I still so love the business of the restaurant, the energy, the every day you have a new problem and a new a uh, solution to come with it, you know? So it's that's just like being in production. When you, when you produce a movie, there's a problem every five minutes, and then you have to come up with a solution every six minutes. And I think that's what I really love about producing, because it reminds me of, of the restaurant game. It reminds me of just teamwork. It reminds me of playing sports. Um, you get to work with different people. You have to understand people's strengths, their, their, their skill sets, and you have to put all that together to make something happen, to come, with, to come, and, to come through a goal. I think the challenge of that is what I'm what I love being able to bring a bunch of different energies together to create something singular. I think that's is what I'm drawn to in producing and directing. Wow. So what do you want your like legacy to be known as? I want my legacy to be known as somebody who cared enough to learn about themselves first and foremost. So myself didn't hurt myself and the people I love that's first and then the second part of that is I want to be able to say people to say that Quran helped more than he hurt and he left it better than when he found it so you were talking about the community a little earlier right do you what are your plans and do you have plans to kind of influence the community or like motivate go out and talk face to face or face the crowd to people about 
stuff that could benefit them. Yeah, I think I'm doing it now. I think I'm living it. I think I'm I'm, I'm, I'm raising my family. Um, I'm, I'm a big proponent of um, living it, living in in your intentions and your purpose and living on purpose. Um, so I feel like I'm a, I'm a type of person who likes to lead by by um, by example. Um, you know talk about it show it and, and, and be about it that's, that's really what it is man i want i want to be able to use my art my 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 uh, platform as an actor and a producer to show the stories to our culture that can can make us curious to go back and search and study our culture and our real history and and, and maybe spark somebody who can who can actually make a real big change because i mean i mean i'm at the you know second half second quarter you know in the second quarter of my life you know i, I gotta start thinking about the next generation like my kids and everybody of, of that nature and i want to be able to leave something for somebody just to be curious to go to go research and, and read and study about yourself because i think in our history is where um our futures lie you know so did you always know about your history um I knew I knew a lot more than I think most of my peers did, just because of my mother. She was really um, the type of person who gave me a lot of uh, background and story of my history. She she made me she she made me understand that my history didn't just start as a slave. You know, my people came from from greatness. You know, W. E. B. Du Bois, um, Marcus Garvey. She talked about all those people and how she 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 referenced those people constantly and she and she made me curious to understand those people because she talked about them all the time and she was a very courageous woman herself you know being a woman who, uh, who passed away from sickle cell and being just a, a black woman who was raised in the south she had a lot of stories that she told us and it, it really informed me as a child and, and definitely has informed me as an adult wow. so what was your life and journey like growing up Man, I, I mean, my life and journey growing up was, you know, I had my parents, my mom, my dad, they were both educators. I had two brothers growing up in Detroit, Michigan. Um, we had cold winters and hot summers and uh, sports, like I told you earlier, sports was kind of the, the focal point of my life after eight. And they kind of kept me on the path of just being, you know, diligent in what I was working on to working towards as far as my goals. And then just you know living and being you know staying staying out of trouble and making my way to, to what i wanted to see myself be um, I'm, I'm very blessed and been very blessed to not have to have to have dealt with some of the things that the city where i come from can can actually put in your life i was very blessed to be that would make a couple good decisions here and there um and not be and not and not have some of the bad decisions I did make cost me because I'm not sitting there saying I was perfect or flawless. I just was really lucky. Right. And I think that's where I, I stay in my in my zone of gratefulness of being like I've always thought I was one of the luckiest people alive. So you say keep pedaling. What was your hardest time where you were like stuck in the mud in life that you had to just pedal your way out ah oh, man it's a couple different times man you know when i trained when i transferred from transferred colleges when i was at smu went to minnesota that was a tough time in my life it was a lot of uncertainty i had to you know believe in myself and believe in my vision um what happened that you transferred to college we, well we just ended up having the, the coaches that recruited me end up getting fired so it's tough to be somewhere that you not that you were chosen to be there at. Like, if you don't get invited to a party, don't go. Type of, that's you know if I can give you that advice right now. Like, if you don't get invited, don't go. So basically, I went invited to the new coaches regime or team, and you could feel that it just really wasn't beneficial to my future. So I transferred to Minnesota where they wanted me, and they wanted to give me an opportunity to to, to fulfill my goals and my dreams. So I went to Minnesota. It was always about the bottom line for me. I didn't care about what school I was at or those type of things. I just need to be in a big enough school that give me enough exposure to get to me, get, get me to the next level. Uh, so you said there were a couple. What are your others? Uh, man, that was one. Going to the NFL was a stretch. You know, when I got to the league, you have to, you know, you got to deal with the transition from college to the league. I think, I think every every point of my life, every transition I've had, you know 
those are always tough for anybody because change isn't comfortable for anybody. So you, you have to understand that when change is upon you, you have to rely on your discipline. You have to rely on your faith. You have to rely on the things that you know of yourself and be open to learn more about yourself because that those things are going to come inevitably in change. So I think what you're referencing to being stuck or being a little bit stagnant, um, I would say every time and I had had to go through a transition in life. I mean, I went through multiple transitions from college to pros to getting married to having kids to um, kids getting older to marriage getting older. I mean, it's a constant cycle of momentum to change to doubt, uncertainty, sludge, what you called it, and and the one constant is to keep pedaling, right? Through all of it, it's, at times you're gonna pedal faster, at times you're gonna pedal slower. But the, but the, the only problem is when you stop pedaling. Mm -hmm. As long as you don't stop, you got a chance. So, when you left the NFL, was that a harder moment for you? Hard moment for you, or did you think it was a? Did you think of it as a new way for opportunities? Yeah, I, I was excited, man. I knew that phase was that chapter was closing. I knew a new chapter chapter was starting. You read books, right? Like you're excited for the next chapter, right? That's how I was. I knew one chapter in my book was closed, and I was going to the next chapter, and I knew it was going to be just as challenging, as fun, and scary, and all the things that the first that chapter to get to the NFL was. So I was excited. You know, I left from football and transitioned to acting, and I was transitioning at the same time of of starting a family and and growing in that aspect as a man. So it was a lot going on when I left football, but I took it on, I took it on head on. And I think, um, I think that's just my personality at the end of the day. Like I don't run from the fire. I'm the type of person that runs into the fire mm -hmm. because I appreciate what happens when you go through the fire. I got a Phoenix tattooed on my back. You know what I'm saying? I believe in rebirth through fire. I believe in becoming better through the pain. Like I've learned Going back on what I talked about earlier, this the book I'm, I'm I'm writing now is what I learned from the bike is I've learned to appreciate the pain, and I think that's a big part of life that people miss. You have to you have to be as appreciative of the pain as you are of the happiness, and I think that's when you have a complete life. You know, people we have these things where we, we when things ain't going our way, we get a little bit of that spoiled that spoiled complex of Oh my God, it's not going my way, but really it is. It's just not going your way smoothly right now. Why is it not going smoothly? That means that's when you have to go inside and figure out exactly what you need to work on. And usually when you fix the things in yourself, the next stage smooths out, right? Transitions come, change comes when it's time for you to change, when it's time for you to level up. So embrace the change, embrace, embrace the level up, embrace the fire. So do you think there is going to be another change or another add-on to what you're doing currently? Oh, absolutely. I mean, we, change is the only thing that's constant in life. That and death and taxes. You know what I'm saying? So like, yeah, it's going to definitely change and evolve and keep moving forward and left, right, up, down, all over the place. You know, the only thing I have responsibility for is myself and my accountability and being accountable for how I move through all those movements, right? I can't lose myself if something goes completely wrong. And I think it's, you know, I can't lose myself if something goes completely right. You know what I'm saying? I can't become somebody different when I blow up and become the biggest star in the world. Or if I'm sitting somewhere in a jail, so you never, I just gotta be the same G, same OG and same true to myself. And I think at the end of the day, the cream always rises to the top. So what do you want your next milestone in life to be? Man, I don't, man, milestones. I, I, I just feel like the next milestone right now immediately is become fully funded in my production company and, and be able to create the kind of content I want um, to be able to use that content to create my legacy, leave that to my children as I grow. I really, I'm really big on owning my content, and owning my image and owning my intellectual property and owning the stuff that God put in me to, to deliver to the world. I think, I think um, that's, that's where, that's where that we need to go. 
So do you think of having more community books, like history, learn your history, not like history books, but like you need to learn your history and more stuff. Cause I looked at, I looked you up on YouTube and stuff. You have a lot of times where you talk, you talk sometimes about the community and other things. And but finding yourself, yes. like people like, where can we find you at on Facebook? And I look before you find me, find yourself. I always say, I mean, before you go looking for me on Instagram or Facebook or Twitter, don't yeah, damn that. Quran ain't that big a deal. Go find out who you are, where you come from, and what your lick history is as a, as a as an African that's been transported away from your 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 home, your basic your home, which is Africa for us. Um, we're the only people in the world who don't have a country that can come get us. Like literally, like there is, if you you can't do the things that happen to black people in this country to a Chinese person, to a Japanese person, to an Italian person, to um, anybody other than us, because everybody else has somewhere they came from, right? They can, you know, you can't do nothing to these people because somebody gonna come and look for them and, and, and it's gonna be some repercussions. So I feel like as black people or Africans in this country, we have to we have to constantly strive to get back to our anchors and our roots of who we, where we come from. And I think that's gonna give us enough self-awareness and self-power that some of these problems that we have in our community as Africans stuck in this place is it's gonna self-correct itself. You know, you stop taking you stop taking the 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 the, the political answers or the TV answers when you know the truth, right? You, you you're able to um, see through see through the show, like the media, all that stuff is a show, man. It's, if, you, if they're saying it, it's a good chance it's probably not not true, right? They, they have an agenda. They have things they got to you know, do. And, um, the media is, is, has an overall arcing um, plan to keep everyone, not just us, everybody at the end of the day, you know, to, to keep us all ignorant of the true history of the world. You know, if, if everybody just understood the true history of the world, I think the world would kind of self-correct itself. You know, people start to see Africans and black people differently if they understood that we we never we never hurt nobody. We never did anything to harm anybody. We've just been here trying to be dope and create and just be magical. We, we never been here to do nothing bad. But if, if the whole world understood that, then people wouldn't look at us so as a threat is what they try to create us as. And I think history, the true history is what really needs to be understood. I think first and foremost, it's up to us to do that for ourselves first, right? We can't look outside for them to do anything for us. We have to do it for ourselves. Yeah. Do you, when you produce, do you think of adding that aspect into your movies or? Oh yeah, I mean, I'm 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 big on when I produce. I'm I'm like I'm the one producer. I always say like I try to have an all black cast and crew if I can help it. You know, like they've been doing it for hundreds of years and nobody called them on it. You know, I, you know, people can say what they want to say when they come on my set. And it's like, dang, you got a whole black cast, you got a whole black crew. I say, yeah, I'm, I'm reversing the 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 problem. You know, but well, you need to have diversity, man. You know, you know how diverse black people are. We got everything, so I got a diverse culture right here on the set. I don't need to hire everything outside of us to to, to do anything. And I think we get caught up in that too as black people is when we get a chance to um, build and do things. We're the only culture that gets looked at badly if we do it completely together. And it's also like if you go on TV and see a show that's just black people, you're like, oh wow. Yeah, it's it's because but again, right now it's just all black people right here. This is my life. So as an artist, I'm gonna paint my life. I'm not gonna go out here and try to paint a picture for somebody else to enjoy that I don't live. And I think you know, people get so caught up in like Hollywood and and the, and, the, and you know the European version of Hollywood, um, why we you know don't get the representation at the Oscars and the Grammys and all that because it ain't for us. It's never been for us. And until we get that through our heads and understanding, like, look, they're not really checking, and we gotta stop begging to be incorporated with that, right? I was just at the NAACP Awards. Our show, The Black Hamptons, was nominated. We didn't win. We lost to the Best Man Holiday, which was 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 a, was a, was a great show. It should have won. But again, while I was at the NAACP Awards, and all I saw was us as a people showing our art and showing our craft and our and our beauty and our excellence. And I, I was like, you know, we don't need anything outside of us, you know. And 
It's not a bad thing that we think that way. It's not a bad thing that we live that way because everybody else on the planet lives that way. You know what I'm saying? You're never going to see a Korean hire a bunch of black people to work in their in their businesses. You're not going to see a bunch of Chinese people hiring a bunch of white folks to work in their businesses. And, and just like them, just like you see it now with the NFL, there's no black owners. There's, again, because that's their business and we have no right to tell anybody how to run their business. All we got to do is get our stuff together so we can run our businesses how we want to run our businesses unapologetically, just like them. And I think that's the goal for me as an artist to just show that and be unapologetic about it. You know, we, we have a bunch of trailblazers in our community already, but I think we just got to stop. We got to stop listening to outside noise about um, the diversity thing and all that because, we're, bro, stop. Don't, don't, come with, don't come with me with being diverse when y'all ain't never been diverse, right? The diversity y'all you use has been slavery. So at this point, I'm, 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 I'm gonna go hard right and, and try to correct the, the situation as much as I can. I'm off my soapbox. <laughs> okay. Well, um, <clears throat> when you're talking about your life growing up and you have uh, your brothers, mm -hmm. are they in the same type of field you're in right now? My older brother was in the music entertainment business. Um, he, he was in that for 25, 30 years. My uh, my cousin was Aaliyah. He managed her career under their, under our family uh, label, which was Black Brown Entertainment at the time. Um, had a lot of dope artists on the, on the label, Genuine, Timbaland, Tony Braxton. Tons of dope Black artists at the time. It was one of the only Black-owned labels at the time. His father, Barry, was the uh, founder of that. Um, my brother, my younger brother's in, in, in education. So uh, I guess two out of the three are bad being in entertainment. But my brother, my older brother, was more in the management side of it. He was back. He was in the background, of more a producer type. Mm. Yeah. Do you guys all ever like get together and work together? Um, I'm, I'm I'm working on some stuff with my older brother. We are working on maybe doing a documentary together um, about the late great Static Major. I don't know if you guys are familiar with his work, but he wrote a lot of songs for Lee and Genuine and. Um, Little Wayne, he's he's a, he's one of the greatest uh, writers probably of like nineties, two thousands. He wrote a lot of songs for Joe to see people like that. Um, he had his own group, Player. His birthday was last week. Um, he was this really dope spirit, and uh, we talking about doing this documentary together. Me and my older brother, and then my little brother. Like I said, he's an education. He's also a, a sheriff, so we have nothing in common to work for. Like I don't have to. I'm definitely not working with the police and I'm definitely not going to be a teacher. And it's cool because I love the fact that he does teach and I love the fact that he has that servant attitude as, as, a, as a police officer, but it's just not who I am. Well, you are teaching in a different way. I am, I am. I'm, I'm, I'm more of a, more of, like I said, I lead by example type teacher. I'm not the one who's gonna talk to you, talk you to death, get right. I'm not gonna talk to you to death, but here I am talking to everybody <laughs> to death, right? Um, no, but seriously, like I'm more of a, like I said, I, I'm more of a doer. You know, just go about what I say I'm gonna do and do what I say. I really work hard at being who I say I am. Yeah, and that's just like, not just talking. Guys. Yeah, I work hard at being who I say I am. If I say I'm gonna be this, I'm gonna work my ass off of being that, right? Um, and I think that's, again, it comes down to accountability. And I think that's what's missing, again, in our community, especially amongst us brothers and our, our, our men that we have to we have to find our accountability in everything. I think one of my best friends, David Banner, tells me one of his quotes that he lives by is, "It's my fault, even when it's not." And that really kind of hit it home for me in the aspect of, "Bruh, just take accountability." It, it's it's so much it's so it's so easy, it's so much easier when you own your shit as opposed to pointing fingers in. And, and trying to blame somebody else outside of yourself for your life. Because at the end of the day, yes, we, we got it tougher than most people being Africans in a world that doesn't necessarily want us to be who we are, but we still find a way to thrive, right? We still find a way to win, we still find a way to do amazing things. So <clears throat> I think the accountability is just understanding our greatness and, and, and being accountable to that greatness and not, and not letting yourself fall victim to all of the things that's trying to make you be a victim. Um, they come from people who built the pyramids, man. Ain't, ain't nothing hard. We just gotta be, we just gotta self-correct. So um, 
I'm going to get back to this uh, situation, but going back to your family, every, mm-hmm. well, a lot of people in your family are in the music industry. Right. This is my brother. This is my older brother. Yeah. So do you ever think of being in the music industry? No, I don't. I don't, I don't have. I, I have a musical um, ear. I can hear music really well. I can understand how it plays in life. I'm good at putting it in movies and things of that nature, but I'm not a singer. I'm not a rapper. I didn't get that gift. Um, so no, I'll, 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 you know, I love music. I love what it does, but at the end of the day, I know what I am and it's not that. Okay. Yeah. So in your life or just in the industry, who do you look up to? Oh man, I look up to, um, you know, I love, um, I love Will Smith. I love Denzel. I love, I love what The Rock is doing. Um, I love Viola. I love, uh, I love my wife, what she's doing in her career. Um, I look up to my wife and her career. I mean, I study her. So I watch everything she's doing. Um, I study everybody. I, I love Nipsey Hussle, man. I look up to that young brother that he passed away. I'm so sad that he's not here to continue his journey. Tupac, Jay-Z, um, uh, Marcus Garvey, um, W.E.B. Du Bois, um, uh, Massa Musa. Uh, Queen Tide, you know, African stuff. I looked up to all those people and I, and I, my ancestors, every one of my ancestors, the people who, who, who are responsible for me even being here talking to you right now. Um, those are, those are the people I look up to. Those are the people that I feel that I have a responsibility to continue to keep pedaling in and, and, and not giving up and, and stay in the course. Do you have, or have you, or do you have any plans to go back to the motherland? Yeah, I'm going back this year, man. At some point, I found out that my um, my my lineage, where my original gene pool started, was in um, Liberia, Sierra Leone. I did the whole African ancestry. I did the 23andMe. I've really been on a real self discovery the last five, six, seven years now, man. And I finally got to the very beginning of like my my uh, patriarchal patriarchal. Um, no, matriarchal, my mother. So my mother's side, my mother's bloodline side of where I came from, which was, again, Liberia, Sierra Leone. So um, I just talked to my friend yesterday. He's from Liberia. We went to college together, played football together. I, we were talking about going to Ghana, then going to Liberia, and getting my citizenship there, all those type of things soon. I'm looking at maybe August. So are you thinking of learning the native language as well? Oh man, I'm gonna learn everything I need to learn, man. I'm 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 all I'm open. I'm open to getting back to my roots. I wanna I wanna buy some, I wanna buy land over there. I want I wanna start creating a new community in Africa for us here to kind of really, you know, bring people like myself to the to the to the uh, homeland and, and basically start building from there. I believe it's not gonna be as nice as it is here because you know they didn't get five hundred years or four hundred years of free labor to build up a country. So we have to go over and do the work, but I, I feel like doing the work for my family and for my people with my blood, it's, it won't be work. it will be more of me being uh, responsible to my to my people. And a lot of people think that it's lesser over there, probably because they didn't have a boost. In- well, well, that's the propaganda. Yeah, that's the propaganda that they want you to feel because they don't. Again, the biggest trick they pulled on us is, is is not allowing us the access to our history and letting us get back to our roots. Because they know if we get back to their history and back to our roots, then they can't keep manipulating us and they can't keep treating us and doing the things they do. So it's it's all propaganda. Africans don't hate uh, African Americans and African Americans don't hate Africans. It's a, it's a propaganda, and I was part of that propaganda for years when I was younger. I didn't know any better. You know what I'm saying? I, you know, African booty scratchers and all this other stuff. And you know, I, I didn't I didn't understand, but as I grow older and got wiser, I started realizing, I mean, this is this is BS, man. Y'all really are working really hard to keep us all separated because the unity amongst us is the way to our futures to really be righteous. And, you know, we gotta we gotta we gotta learn how to support each other blindly, like they support each other. Like we don't have to agree with everything that I you don't have to agree with everything I say or do. But, but as long as we have like Understand it, yeah. and, and but again, I'm never gonna go on TV and and dis and disagree with Jalen in front of everybody. I'll do that. With me and you sitting here at the house having a beer one day. Hey, Jalen, you know yeah. what you think about that plan? Man, I don't, I don't know if that was really good. 
but that's between us. Yeah. I'm not going to go on Fox News. I'm not going to go on Shade Room. I'm not going to go on TMZ. I'm not going to ever go on nothing and talk against my people. Yeah, because that's what drives us apart. Drives that's what drives us apart. That's what keeps us apart. And that's what keeps us not winning. So for me, I think we just got to change that narrative. Like, you, like every, it's got it's to it's start holding strong at some point. So you said you were part of that propaganda as a kid. What did you think hap- well, was happening in Africa? And what do you know now that really changed you? For the uh, it was just the propaganda. Like I said, we don't control any media. So whatever they say and put out, you start hearing it. And that's what you believe at some point until you have to unlearn everything. Everybody has to go through a whole unlearning process. Once you go through the unlearning process, then you got to be diligent and relearning the right stuff. You know, once you relearn the right stuff, you start seeing like, yo, I just, this, I was wrong. I didn't, I, I was wrong to believe some of this stuff. I was wrong to believe any of this stuff. Actually, anything that you heard and everything you learned outside of yourself and what you really, you don't know if it's real unless you see it for yourself. Yeah, it's not even, yeah, it's not even real unless you see it for yourself or unless you research it for yourself, unless you read it for yourself. Like, what's the old saying? If you hide something from a black person, put it in a book, right? All the answers is here. We just gotta go. You just, you just have to have the the, the 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 gumption to go look for it and get it. Yeah. So, to the audience, mm-hmm. can you tell them a way that they can learn this further? Ah uh, man, you know what I gotta start doing? I gotta start putting a book list together it's for everybody to go and get and read. Um, it's a ton of books, man. I think. I think I think if everybody just started with maybe looking up um, Dr. John Henry Clark, um, he's one of our great ancestors who, who's now an ancestor, and he was one of our most well-read and most historical. He understood all. He read all history. He understood it all, and that's where I go get. I, I list I list all his lectures and whatever book he mentions, I go get it, hmm. and I try to read it. I don't try to read. I read it or study it at some point. I start listening to what. Cause, cause this biggest quote was always like, "Look, man, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't argue with people beneath me. Like, if you got, you have to have knowledge. And if you don't believe me, go read it. You, you know, just go get a book. Go read it. That's period. You know. So for, for me, I would say just go and look up Dr. John Henry Clark. Start there. Um, uh, Dr. Claude Anderson. Um, Dr. Umar Johnson." Um, David Banner. Um, it's a lot of people who give a lot of information on us. So I would just say, just start following the right people and start paying attention to the right people. At the end of the day, I could sit here and read off 20 books to you, but again, I'm not in that lane of lecturer. I'm not in that lane of um, educator, like those people I just mentioned to you were in, the, in, that, in that classical sense. Um, but I think I think it it will behoove anybody listening that looks like you and I to to uh, look at those look into those those people I mentioned just a few of them I mean autobiography autobiography of Michael Mex is, is an amazing book to read and the resources you just get from that is just amazing and you don't have to be an Islam Muslim any of that it's just really at the end of the day You're reason, right. yeah at the end of the day the reason why he was he was he was taken out is because he he acted outside of what Islam and what they wanted him to do, basically, and, and he acted like a a, a, pro, a, a a a African man, black man who understood his history, and he really wanted everybody else to understand that. You may not uh, like agree with everything the person had to say, but you also have to take some stuff that are important and use it to your own. Self. Yeah, you're never going to agree with everything anybody says. I mean, you know, I know you don't agree with anything your mom says, and she doesn't agree with anything that you say. And y'all are the closest as anybody. And one day you have a, a wife, and one day you have kids. You're not going to agree with them on everything, but. I think the real thing is when you, when you love them, when you love people, you have to search for understanding in, in that. Even if I don't agree with you, I yeah, love yeah, you, yeah. so I'm a, I'm a search for understanding. Like I get it, I just I just don't feel it. Right. Like thing, it's no no harm, no loss. Even if you like don't know someone personally or like just heard of them, you still have to take account of what they're saying even if you don't fully agree with their well yeah i think i think you i think you just actively listen and you have and you and you you critically think for yourself right and and once you you can do those things whatever opinion you form is your opinion um 
one thing I've learned is that your opinion is your opinion, and it's not that big a deal in the, in the grand scheme of the world and life. So don't put that much on it anyway, right? There's no right or wrong. There's no this is this way and that is that way. It's just really what you think and what you feel. Like people are not gonna like think of Martin Luther King Jr. as what comments he like on his a hot dog or anything like that. It's what he the message he put out. It's not like the little things that you disagree with out with someone. It's about the thing you put out to the world, which yeah, and it's a lot of people doing. I don't agree with. I didn't agree with Martin's Martin Luther King's way of nonviolence. Like you can't slap me, and I'm not gonna slap you back. That that just ain't happening. No shape, fashion, or form. I don't give a damn what we trying to accomplish. Um, I was more in alignment with what the way Malcolm was thinking, right? So that's a prime example of I didn't agree on everything that Martin said, but I totally understood, and I totally supported, it, and I was totally with it. But I wasn't a hundred percent with it. It's like. I'm with my boys, but the moment y'all say we about to rob a liquor store, I'm not with my boys yeah. on that, right? Like, hey, you want to rob up this liquor place? No, nah, yeah, we're not doing that. Was, now, now I'll be, I'll be really cool with you know doing something productive in the productive side of life, but you know at that point, gotta draw a line. That that don't make them not my boys because I have friends that took different paths in life, and then it doesn't make me not love them less. It's just like I can't hang out with you that much more because you obviously chose a different path that. Ain't really what I want to do, and that's fine too. There's no right or wrong in this thing. It's really what you choose to do and how you choose to do it, right? So once you figure out that, everything becomes less stressful, less less um hard, right? The thing I've come up with in the last year or so is don't squeeze the soap. Just hold it and be be, be cool and be calm, and everything is gonna come to you as it should. So um, as we we're nearing the end of the interview, I want to talk about some stuff in more of your personal life outside of the industry and mm -hmm. uh, well, what you do from day to day. So on like, let's say you have nothing to do all day, like nothing, what would you be doing? What would you be doing? I would definitely, I would definitely work out if the weather permits, I'd get on my bike, probably do 30, 20, 30, 40 miles, depending on, you know, so I got nothing to do. I'll probably do a long bike ride, maybe catch a movie, uh, read, uh, meditate, uh, Look, 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 you know, read some news, see what's going on just in the world so I can understand where what's happening. Not necessarily take any account of, no, I don't, I don't, I don't absorb it anymore. I, I just take it, I'm just, you know, I, I take it in and, and look at it and let it be what it is. In the past, I used to absorb it and be like, oh my God, this is so just depressing. But now it's like, okay, I just need to be understand what's going on. I know that I'm not flying into the Ukraine anytime soon because of watching the news. Yeah. Imagine, you know what I'm saying? Imagine I ain't watching news and I'm like, I'm about to book me a vacation to the Ukraine. Yeah, like, oh, I heard like oh, not my, good. My buddy from there. Yeah, know? no, we're not doing that. So again, I, I you know, I watch the news now more for understanding of the world I'm in and knowing where to go, what not to do, and where what not to go. So um, yeah, my day to day is simple, man. I, of course, take care of my kids. You know, I got about to about two or well, three o'clock when Lola gets off that bus and then I'm back to parenting. So I got about a window from seven thirty, eight o'clock to three o'clock to Get everything I need done, and I got to switch back into parent mode, um, and, and and handle that, you know. So, so you were talking about reading a book. What is your favorite book to read? Man, I read everything, bro. I, I don't have a favorite book. I, I just I got comic books when I go to the bathroom. I got um, I just bought a dope book that uh, Rick Rubin wrote when I was when I just traveled to LA this weekend. Um, the Art of Creation. Um, I read a lot of his history books, obviously. Um, I just read, bro. Like, whatever my spirit is really on at the time, I, I read it. I go with that. I, I could be reading three or four books at a time. Like, I'd be reading one book for a minute, and then I'd switch to another book. And I could be doing another book and switch to another book. So I'm all over the place when it comes to reading my books. I'm, I'm all over the place when it comes to the input I take into my body. Like, I'm, I'm the kind of guy who has a TV on. I'll be looking on the internet. I had a music playing and I'll be trying to, and I'll be paying attention all at the same time. So yeah, don't, don't, yeah. 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 That's, how my, that's how my mind works. It is what it is. Yeah. Let's get a lot done in a short amount of time. Well, you know, I just, I just need a lot of stimuli to really be focused. Cause again, I don't know if it comes from me playing sports and all those years with a lot of people yelling and cheering for me that I had to stay focused on a task that I got used to having a lot of external stimuli to really make me focus on the task at hand. So like we could be in a meeting and I and I might be on my phone 
taking notes or just scrolling through something just so I can be locked in to what they're saying type of goal. You know what I'm saying? People are like, is he listening? Yeah, I hear everything at that point. I have problems and I'm just sitting there not nothing else to do. Then my mind just starts to wonder. Yeah, and I start to imagine stuff and I go into my imagination. My imagination is my greatest gift. Yeah, like, sometimes you're like someone's talking to you, sometimes you're just like, I, I just I'm I'm one of those people that I don't believe anything is more interesting than what I'm thinking anyway. I swear to God, it's like I'm so self-absorbed when it comes to that. Like I'm the type of guy that like if you're not interesting, I will just go into my own brain and just be looking at you like this is who I am. I don't yeah. So you say you also watch movies. Do you normally watch movies that you star in or do you try to I don't even watch movies? I, I don't I rarely watch stuff I'm in now. Um unless I just want to see how it turned out because it was something that was dear to me. But most of I, I I study I study everything under that the, the levels of movies I want to get to. I study the actors I love. I study, um, and again, I watch TV differently than most people because I'm an actor. Like anybody, like even with, even with football, that's why I don't watch it anymore because it's not fun to me. That like when I watch football that much, I was at work studying film. So for me, it's like studying film. Like this reminds me of work. Why am I watching this game? Like as soon as you turn it on, yeah, because like, I don't, it, I don't see it as entertainment like everybody else does. Like it's like it's literally, like, yeah, it's 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 work. Like as I'm, if I'm watching a movie, it's it's really hard to escape and just in, in, and enjoy it as opposed to you watching. See all these I see everything. I yeah. see everything. I see the shots. I see the lighting. I see the acting. I see, you see like the ketchup bottle that was hot. No, I don't. Seen I'm not one of those people that look at the kind of movie that tough. Like unless it's something that jumps out. I'm more concerned about the film, how you know how it looks, the lighting, the you know just the feel of the movie does it feel rich does it feel like it was a budget does it is the acting good um is the writing good what are they saying is it does it does it resonate with me type of thing so those are the things i look for when i'm watching tv film and as i'm watching it i'm i'm, I'm recording it for me so when i'm producing something i might be in and they be like Karan, what do you think about this shot and i might have an idea from one of my favorite movies one of my favorite shows let's see if we can do this shot right here and and we put that into the movie. Like, I believe that nothing's new under the sun. So, everything that Quentin Tarantino's done, he had access to it, like I have access to it in the universal energy. And the difference between him and me and somebody who doesn't achieve their goals is that when those energetic things come into your spirit, you have a choice at that point. Believe that it's came to you right now. And do I go for it and work for it? That's his life. And there's so many people who have these visions of their life and they and they make excuses why they can't go after those visions, right? And they end up being 60, 70, 80 years old, miserable because they didn't go after those visions. They took the safe route of, let me go get this thing, let me go do what I, you know, that's safe. And most of the time, betting on yourself ain't safe. It don't feel safe, it's scary as hell. To believe in yourself, believe in a vision, a goal that you don't get to see yourself doing a lot. Like, I mean, still, even you, yeah, it's 2023, you still don't see a lot of us doing what we do in a broad spectrum. And, like, let's say you're betting on yourself, but you know you're going to do this. It's like cheating yourself. If you don't. Yeah. And you're going to live with that. You, like, I, I did a post the other day where you, I said, I've made discipline my slave. And, and basically, you're going to live with two things in your life guaranteed. Either you're going to live with regret. Or you're gonna live with discipline, or you're gonna regret. So I, it's like, which one do you choose? Yeah, and choose discipline over regret. Yeah, and even like if you better yourself, like what you said earlier, choosing the safe route. Like if you're trying to win a tournament, but it's against kids, that would be the safe route instead of trying to go against college kids or anything like that. Right, because you, you're going against kids, you guarantee the win. Yeah, but but are you really winning? Because you're not getting better at what you're doing, obviously. So if you play against somebody a much stronger, much better, yeah, that's a lot riskier because you might lose, probably will lose. But at least you learn something. Well, you're gonna learn something, you're gonna get better. Yeah. And eventually, if you keep doing against those guys that are better than you or whatever, you're gonna beat them eventually if you stay at it. But most people are afraid of that. Like I said, you can't be afraid to go into the fire. The fire is where the gifts are. That's where faith lies. Faith, faith ain't faith ain't. I mean, what's so big about faith if everything going good? It then it's not even existent. So you have to have faith in yourself. And I think people 
we, we, we lost our ways and thinking faith, having faith in something again outside of yourself. You got to have faith in yourself. You got to have faith in the vision that God is sending you because you are connected to the most high. And, and you made an agreement with him before you or she or it, whatever the entity of the most high is, you made that agreement before you got here. And our really only objective is to really figure out what that what that agreement was while we're here. And the faster you can get to understanding what that agreement was, the better and the easier and the more godly and the more love your life is going to have. Well, um, we are currently out of time. Though. Are we did? Do we do an hour already? Yeah. So that was pretty fast. Yeah. Wow. I, and you did all that without any kind of notes of paper or anything. That's pretty impressive. That's that young brain. <laughs> yeah. I try to keep it sharp, you know. Well, right, you listen to You did good, man. Proud of you. Thank you. Thank you. But before we get off, mm -hmm. I normally ask you to, you know, say your socials and all that. But I know I know what you're going to say now. I'm, I'm going to say this. So I'm going to say what you need me to say, but I'm also going to say what I always yeah. say. Before you find me, go find yourself. Go after you find yourself. Look me up, Karan Joseph Riley, Karan J. Riley, across all platforms. I'm not hard to find because I'm not hiding from nobody. Definitely not hiding from myself, and you shouldn't either. Keep pedaling. Yes. Keep pedaling, guys. And thank you for all the support you give me because it really, it really means a lot to me. And I really, I really like what I'm doing. And I'm seeing all these other people do other things too, which really, really motivates me. So thank you guys for following me, sharing all of that, and guys, just stay tuned. All right. <laughs> good job, brother. Thank you. He did good, right? Yep, he killed it.